our lives were unraveling. Satan had basically taken everything from me. We actually were living at opposite ends of the house. I remember having my first drink. I almost died a hundred different times, probably. I had a lot of demons. Utter resentment. It's getting harder and harder and harder. It's not getting easier. It's getting harder. We kind of fell in the trap of religion. And I yelled at God, tears. I just kind of knew, that's it. I'm done. It might have been the first true miracle that I ever witnessed in my life. We knew we were taking the right next step. My father-in-law was out in the front yard asking me how bad, how bad is it really, Steve? That I'd rather uh, live with Satan himself than go back in there with your daughter. 17 years into our marriage, we were done. We don't love each other. We're not acting like we love each other. You're living in the garage. I'm living on the other end of the house. That was my safe zone. Six feet by three feet. That was it. That was all I had. When I was walking out the door, Stephen was 13, Lawson was 11, and Kaylee was 10. Things just kept getting harder and harder. I'm not living a lie anymore. I yelled to God, please tell me what to do. We were both self-employed. I'm a geologist. Try to find where oil and gas fields exist, and then we try to raise the money to fund the drilling and completion and production. I had an advertising agency, so I did copywriting, laid out ads, and I actually was the TV personality. So I would go and sell cars and jewelry. The American dream, but, you know, started from scratch, and that it's tough when neither of the people in the marriage have a steady income. Incredible financial crunches, very stressful life. Could you pay the bills? How are you going to pay the bills? Times that were very uh, scary. Even though we were going through the steps, going through the motions, just didn't seem to be working out. And, and we, we were like, you know, why? It's getting harder and harder and harder. It's not getting easier, it's getting harder. We're getting farther behind every year. We kind of had that mindset that many people do, that if you do right and live right, that life will be right. We're going to church, we're singing in choir. You know, we're, Lane's teaching a Bible study. We're helping the poor. We're living the life at home as best as we can, even under the immense strain of our marriage. We were trying to do the right thing. And yet at the same time, our lives were unraveling. Born and raised in Mississippi, we were brought up in church. We went to church every Sunday and Wednesday. Born in Jackson, Mississippi, it's kind of a mid-sized southern town. Rice Presbyterian, sang in the choir. As a child, would watch television. A couple of TV evangelists, some of the first ones, I would sing praise and worship music and send my dime for that healing oil. In the church I was going to, that really wasn't a common thing. The Holy Spirit gifts were not very present. Pretty typical American. I had a summer job, did a lot of construction work. I didn't wait till I was 18 to start drinking beer. I was home from graduate school. There was this cute guy in the backyard of my friend's house, and I said, hey, I'm Lane. He goes, I'm Steve. We wound up going on a date that night. Neither of us ever dated anyone again. Went to college, got a degree, got married. We had a starter house, went to church on Sundays. We participated in church more than just sitting there. We sang in the choir, and we did what you're supposed to do. You go to church. And that's what you do in the South. We kind of fell in the trap of religion. Then we had three children in five years. I had two miscarriages. First, it seemed to, to be fine, you know, could, you know, got my wife bought a new little car, you know, I got a new little house, a new little baby, and go to church and everything's fine. And and then, you know, you start having struggles. Our finances were not good. Satan had basically taken everything from me. Just utter resentment. We were keeping tallies of who was doing what in the household. The world was sucking me in. It was telling me I deserved more. I could find a better husband. The grass was going to be greener if I could just get out of this situation. It was Satan really telling me, if you get divorced, everything's going to be better. That's where all your problems are. And I thought to myself, you've already taken everything, Satan. All I've got left is my marriage. 
So I chose to lay down on the couch in my office, which was a closed-in garage. And I yelled at God, please tell me what to do. Tears. We actually were living on opposite ends of the house at the most desperate point. Steve was living in a, a closed-in garage. I was living on the other side of the house. I was left with one desperate, despairing cry out to God and said, God, if you're real, would you please help me? And would you show up? Me and my wife found ourselves in the driveway. And we kind of leaned up against the, the garage doors. He said, you know, it's been tough, hadn't it? And I said, yes. We both looked at each other. This is miserable. If we are going to start over, why not start over again together? We looked at each other, and we knew that to start again, that we're going to have to be absolutely truthful. That was the only way we could get to forgiveness. And we knew that forgiveness was the key to moving forward in our marriage. Because, I mean, you don't get to that point quickly. When your marriage is going bad, it takes years and years and years. And this is 17 years, I, I so we built resentment. I and mean, we had said a lot of mean things to one another. Uh, we had done a lot of mean things. After 17 years, we fell to our knees and we said, Father God, if you're real, if you're really real, would you step in today and help us start over again? When we looked at, in each other's eye, it, that was the shortest moment of my life. Um, it might have been the first true miracle that I ever witnessed in my life. The miraculous moment was in my wife's eyes. Immediately, Steve and I both felt this warmth that indescribable warmth, and just a peace that we knew we were taking the right next step. The restoration, the forgiveness, what I saw in her eye, it happened in less than a second, and it was all God. And you knew that everything was gone and everything was new. I mean, she saw the same miracle in my eyes. We literally were able to forgive one another right then and say, I'm willing to try to start over, are you? And we did. We share a lot of meals together. We're all leaders. Yes, strong. So it's amazing that we can sit in the same room together. Or cook dinner together. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's hard. Worst. That's really hard. Because everybody has to. Everybody's got their own technique, and they aren't approved by the other ones who have their own technique. We're all kind of each other's best friends. Kaylee's 27, I'm 28, and Steven's 31. Steven's very outgoing. He's very smart, super kind, a lot kinder than I am. <laughs> He is a leader for me and Lawson. A lot like me, believed he could do anything in life if he applied himself. Very intentional. Lawson is our next one. He's 28. We called him Guy Smiley. He just smiled and smiled. First word that comes to mind when I think of Lawson is loyalty. He's always had my back. We're only 11 months apart. We have always been really close. He's just always been my buddy. Now we live one mile from each other and he's over at my house every day. <laughs> he really cares about people. He's very intentional. I'm very close with both of them. Kaylee, our youngest daughter. She is 27. Of course, I think she's the most beautiful girl in the world. Strong and a fun. Fantastic art. She's also very loving. We kind of click a little more. We're just a little more similar. I visit with my sister often. We're so happy that they frequent each other's homes with us being in a different town. I, I don't think anything can make a parent more happy than, than their kids being friends. And they are And supporting dad. one another. We chose good over evil. My marriage, no Satan, you can't have it. Yes, in one moment, our marriage was resurrected. We looked at each other with different eyes, different perspective, but then we had to walk it out. There was a, a Sunday then that, that I didn't know how I was gonna pay the bills on Monday morning. Nobody could help me. You know, I needed about 15,000 a month to, to Sunday. You know, for the next two or three months, I needed 50,000, and if I didn't, the interest rates on the credit cards might go from 
the introductory rate of 1% all the way to 25%, then it's gonna be a real problem. I opened the mailbox on Monday, it's a $50,000 check. I didn't even know who's, what, what? And we called him our guardian angel, I mean. It, just God just did so many things like that for us. In the first 20 years, I think I found one oil field. Just about giving up. We, we went from nothing in 20 years to we completed 100 new oil wells in 100 months. God's going to have to start giving some of these blessings to other people we don't need anymore. Sure, that was going great, but my kids were in hell. Memos died 100 different times, probably. We were angry. I remember having my first drink. I'm living in a penthouse, party king now. Ecstasy, molly, mushrooms. I had a lot of demons, acid. Started getting into cocaine. Something drove me out. I was wrapped up in a sting operation. My wife would get scared of the phone ring. I'd say it was living hell. The closer we got to breakthrough, the more Satan would attack. That was really hard. God is love, and love comes from God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us that God is not only all-loving, but that He actually is love itself. The heart of the Parent Compass television show is to bring the transforming love of God to families everywhere. In every Parent Compass episode, true stories reveal family struggles and how their lives were radically changed by the love of God. Parent Compass, an award-winning television series, is completely funded by people like you. If you have been touched by God and you want to share God's love to others, would you please pass it on? Jesus tells us to go into all the world and to tell about Him. With your donation, you allow us to take this television show into many different nations and in many different languages, free of charge and a portion of your donation goes to Parent Compass Outreach to feed starving children. Your gift does so much. To make your tax-deductible gift, go to parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. That's parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. And thank you for sending love and hope around the world.